Um, hello everyone, welcome to another video. This time we are going to discuss uh, while use a uh, umbrella feature called uh, Security Internet Gateway or SIG for sure. And this time we are going to review a very basic topology to uh, show how the configuration looks like and how uh, the traffic flow will, uh, will traverse uh, the ASA. We also have the umbrella setting review. And for this time, we are going to use uh, firewall, uh, Cisco ASA, to configure the tunnel between uh, the internal uh, traffic to umbrella. And we are going to have three different demo. One, the first one is going to be related to the uh, create and testing file firewall rules. We are going to test in those rules that we have created. And last but not least, we are going to go over the reporting on login so we can verify the traffic is working well and we have everything set up and the traffic is uh, crossing um, without an issue. Um, just a quick overview of this is one of the four uh, methods that we can uh, configure umbrella and secure web gateway. The other three methods that we are not going to discuss in this video, but just to give you an idea is uh, the proxy chaining, the pod file, and the any connect. So as mentioned, we're going to use the edge device tunnel, which, which means the IPsec tunnel, and we are going to build the IPsec between our device, in our case is Cisco ASA, to uh, Umbrella, and Umbrella is going to send the traffic towards the internet. So basically, we are going to have a proxy between our LAN and internet. This is our topology. So all the configuration and the demo that we are going to show today is going to be based on this topology. And basically, we are going to see the traffic coming on uh, this uh, LAN that we are seeing over here on the bottom of the page. We are also going to build the tunnel, and we are going to see more details on the configuration templates uh, in a moment. We're going to be the tunnel between the ASA and umbrella, and we are also going to um, use a PBR so we can decide which trap is going to be on the tunnel. For this demo, we are going to, uh, we are using umbrella data center uh, 146.112.67.8, or if Depending on where you are, you can use any of the umbrella data center IP address. Um, as we can see on the right side between internet and umbrella data center, we also have a public IP address 155.193.6. And that basically means that the configuration and the communication between internet and umbrella uh, will go through this IP address. And this kind of communication will come in from umbrella to uh, the LAN as response in case the traffic is allowed based on our um, secure gateway configuration. One topic, one important item to call out is the fact that in this case we are using IPsec protocol for tunnel traffic. That means the traffic that we want to cross and we want to go towards internet will be sending through the tunnel. As with a normal IPsec tunnel, we are going to have multiple components. One of the most important one is the IT. And something important to mention is that Umbrella only supports IKV2, which is of course faster and more secure than IKV1. However, uh, we might see some cases where uh, IKV1 could be used, where those are very corner cases and well, we, we would try to be in line on the best practices and documentation. When it comes to configuration overview, uh, we have basically three steps that we need to confirm. First of all, we need to configure the IQV2 policy. Then we need to configure the group policy and two group parameters. And finally, we need to configure the IPsec using uh, some of the following parameters that we are going to see in the moment. Okay. 
Okay. Moving on the configuration, that's pretty much uh, the settings and the commands that we need to implement on our ASA. Uh, we are going to see the demo, real demo with real device with real tools in a moment. But basically, we wanted to uh, show you how the configuration looks like uh, for your reference. As I mentioned, one of the first steps is just to configure IQV2. So basically we have this basic configuration for IQV2. We have uh, the encryption integrity group, uh, the development group, which is 19 in our case. And, and we have lifetime in seconds, 60, 60, uh, 86,400. Well, in regards to the tunnel group parameters, as I mentioned before, we are going to see 146 uh 11267 .8, our as our umbrella data center ip address and this is where we need to define this ip address so we need to make sure we are using a valid and fully ip address from the umbrella data center um for number three configuration from ipersp um, ipsec perspective we are also using um dsp encryption 256 and ESP for integrity. The first step, which is, is perhaps one of the uh, confusing term, and this is uh, very useful when we configure the tunnel, is the raw place BTI. In this case, we are using internal IP address 181.68.22.21. If we go back to the topology, very quickly, we are going to see the source interface is this one, 182.168.22.1. As you can see here, we are using this one, and we also using uh, umbrella data center IP address as well. Okay. Um, the rest of the configuration, in this case, uh, the access list, uh, the PBR, and the next pop, is very important to set up the next pop, is part of the PBR configuration. So make sure you have the next hub as peer, but also make sure you define the umbrella data center IP address. Right? Last but not least, we have uh, the interface. We are assigning the interface to a VLAN, in this case, uh, VLAN number three. We are, of course, uh, defining a name, a security level, as this is uh, ASA. The configuration looks like pretty much similar on a router, but of course, this is uh, something that you won't need to configure on the router, but on the ASA, it's mandatory. And finally, we are configuring the IP address on the ASA so we can uh, send the configuration and send the traffic from the ASA towards the internet through Umbrella. Okay. Uh, Ikran, that's all that I wanted to mention. Is there anything else that you would like to add on this case before going to the demo? No, I think that's good. Um, I could go ahead and start uh, testing it out uh, on the machine. We could verify the tunnel of verification on the dashboard as well. So let's go ahead Please. and do that. Yes, okay. okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. So this is the umbrella dashboard. Um, so we can see that our Cisco ASA now shows as active. Sorry, um, yes. Uh, yes. Are you sharing your screen? I'm, no, I'm not able to see it. Okay. Uh, yeah, perhaps there's something I would need to. Can you see my screen okay. now? Uh, okay, we can see it. Okay. Now. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So this is the umbrella dashboard. Um, we can see that our Cisco ASA shows as active. Uh, that's what we want to we want to see. Uh, it's connected to the LA data center, and we can see which public IP we're coming from. Uh, we could also validate this on the Cisco ASA. Um, so let's go to the Cisco ASA. I have it open here. Um, so if you run, uh, if you verify the uh, phase one here, um, we see we're connected. We're connecting from 96.53.37.50, which is my public uh, IP. And the remote end, which is the, the data center in Los Angeles, is 146.112.67.8. And we're seeing uh, the status is in ready. So we see, you know, phase one is up. Uh, and we also see phase two where uh, there, we are seeing traffic 
uh, being encrypted and decrypted. Uh, to also validate that we're actually going through Cisco Umbrella to get out to the internet, uh, we can check the external IP. So let's go ahead and verify that. Uh, I do have a test machine. Uh, so based on the topology, there was a test machine that's sitting behind the ASA, uh, which I'm logged into right now. So, so this PC is 192.168.3.10. So to validate it, what we could do is we could go to, you know, what is my IP or IP chicken? And here you see that uh, we're getting a 155 address, which is the same subnet as the Umbrella Data Center, uh, what we looked at earlier. So by this point, we should be pretty confident that we're actually going through Cisco Umbrella to get out to the internet. Um, another way to verify is to actually go and check the reporting under the dashboard, which we'll get to uh, once we've verified uh, you know, the web policy configurations. Uh, but now that this is configured and our tunnel is online, let's go ahead and uh, apply some firewall and web security policy to start you know, securing our network. So let's go back to the dashboard. And under policy, uh, you'll see DNS policy, firewall policies, and web policy. What we're, what we're going to be looking at is firewall policies and web policy. So once you go to firewall policies, um, by default, we just see the default rule, which is going to be permit any. So on this firewall policy page, uh, we'll be able to create a new firewall rule set similar to what you would you know, create on a traditional Cisco firewall. So we could permit or deny traffic based on applications, port, protocols, source IP, destination IP, and all that fun stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and test this out. So we're going to be adding a new uh, firewall rule. And we'll keep this rule as test block. We'll name it test block. And we'll go ahead and keep the priority as last rule before, before a default. So let's keep it at that. We'll scroll down a little bit. We have a bunch of options that we could configure here. So we'll go ahead and change the protocol to ICMP. So one unique option that you might see is the source tunnel. Uh, so say we had multiple different ASAs connecting out to Cisco Umbrella. We could go ahead and click spe the specific tunnel and select our ASA to only apply this rule set to traffic coming from, from that source tunnel. But in this case, we only have one tunnel. So we could go ahead and specify the tunnel. So let's go ahead and do this. And let's go ahead and block traffic to 8.8.8. Uh, so let's go ahead and add as a specific IP. And let's go ahead and add 8.8.8. Okay, for rule schedule here, um, we'll keep it as on all, all the time here. Uh, so it doesn't expire. And going to do now is just uh, make sure the logging is enabled and what we're going to do is we're going to block traffic for this. So before I enable it, we're going to go to the test machine and actually test it out. So if I go and do ping to 8.8.8. .8 .8. Okay, so you see here, we're able to ping down a uh, ping to 8.8.8, but if we jump back to the dashboard, the firewall policies, and we're just going to enable it now, enable uh, the policy.
looks like it just takes some time here. Um, It will take a fair as soon as we uh, okay there you go. Yeah, so yeah, so Sorry, it looks again. like it took some time, right? So now we're dropping uh traffic to 8.8.8. Of course, if we test it, let's say with uh for example, if we test it with 8.8.4.4, um we should be able to still get out. Uh So we should still be able to get out to the internet. So we still know, so we, we we're able to confirm that the internet access is still valid through the Cisco umbrella, but we just blocked ICMP to a die die. So now obviously we have a lot of potential for what we could, you know, configure through the firewall policies. But one of the other good things about using Cisco umbrella is the secure internet gateway functionality. Uh, so it's the ability to apply direct inline web policy with any config configuration on the client PC. So any traffic that's being tunneled out to Umbrella could have a web policy applied. So that web traffic is going to get inspected uh, through the tunnel uh, once it flows through the tunnel. So once the traffic is flowing through the tunnel, it gets inspected. So to give this a shot, let's go head over to the web policy. Uh, so let's go back to here. Uh, let's go to the web policy. Um, and right here, um, we have the default policies. Uh, which applies to all identities. Uh, what I did is I went ahead and created a new policy. Um, and under the policies, you know, I, I named it block Cisco. And for the identity, I put the network tunnel. So the network tunnel that we're coming uh, uh, sourcing from. And for the destination list here, let me just go to edit rules. For the destination here, I have a destination list uh, block list uh, where I added in Cisco.com. Um, so any users that's coming from this tunnel, uh, will get a block page when they try to access Cisco.com. So right this now, a word to mention uh, in time here, if you want me to, is, uh, the umbrella block page is hundred percent customized. So depending on the customer need, you can change the image, you can change the message and that's very, really cool. Cool. Uh, cool, cool. You want to customize your blog page trying to add that that part as yes. well. Yeah. Um. So that's one of the. I mean, for the identities. Um. In this case, we're going through an IPsec tunnel. So, uh, you could integrate it with, uh, having the identities as your AD user, but you do need to have SAML. Um. Uh, you need to have uh, Opta integrated uh, in order to. Uh, see your AD information, but since we don't have that um, set up here, uh, the identity, the only identity that we could choose is is the network tunnel. So right here, I I didn't enable the rule. I, I just disabled it just so we could test it. So if we go into Cisco.com. You can see the page is loading here. We're able to get to it. Now let's go ahead and uh, enable the rule. Okay, now if we click refresh again, take some time here. Let me just close this out. Yeah, so we are getting the blog page, which is what we expect uh, based on the policies that we uh, put in place. So the reason why it was getting uh, 
blocked is because we added it to the destination block list and applied it to the web policies. Um, so, which is what we expect. So, the site is now getting blocked to the content or due to the destination uh, list. Uh, now we could go back to the Cisco Umbrella dashboard and other things that we could actually check is the activity log. So let's go back in here and under reporting, you'll see activity search. So right within the activity search, uh, you could see, you could filter out by uh, DNS traffic. You could filter out by firewall traffic. And you could also filter by web traffic. So if we filter out by web traffic here, we should be able to see the requests that we're getting through. Let's check the firewall real quick. Okay, let's see, it just take some time for it to show up. Um, yeah, so the identity is the tunnel that we're uh, coming from. That's the policy uh, rule set it's using, and this is the destination that we're, we're trying to reach. And then you can see the internal IP that we're coming from. This is the test machine. And it basically tells you whether it's blocked or allowed. And then the categories that the domain is a part of. So in this case, it's infrastructure and content and delivery network. Um, here we see as computer security. So we could also go back to the policy firewall, um, to the firewall policy and we could see the, the blocks earlier as well. So let's go to, and we should see, Blocks. So this is uh, the block that we did to uh, 8.8.8, and we see it in here. Uh, the protocol that was used is ICMP, and the rule set that were you, you used was test underscore block. And then the, and then the time itself. So now within the Cisco Umbrella Secure Gateway and the Secure Web Gateway, there's like a handful of ways to connect here. So including any connect, proxy chaining, pack files, and now the IPsec, what we demonstrated today. So this is one way that you could implement this into your network. But I wanted to run through some quick demo of how to do so. So what we did was we created a, a policy, a basic policy to block um, any, any traffic that's coming from this tunnel to the destination cisco.com and it was getting blocked. The action that was applied was blocked. We also created a firewall policy um, where anything that's sourcing uh, from the tunnel going to 8.8.8, uh, we're blocking ICMP traffic. And then what we did was we verified all that uh, under reports, reporting, activity search, and we verify that the traffic we were seeing for both firewall and web policies. So that was it on my end here, Emmanuel. Uh, we were able to verify that. Um, we were able to create the policies and verify the traffic uh, was going through uh, our IPsec tunnel and out to Umbrella. Was there anything else that you wanted to add? I uh, just want to encourage uh, the audience to stay tuned because we are going to continue with this video series just to show you how you can configure, how you can leverage umbrella power to secure your internet traffic. Stay tuned.